And once again, the Lord provides a message with the titles. You keep hope alive. In my dear hopes and dreams, I can only imagine graves into gardens. Hope has a name, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, thank you for being here this morning and for you watching online. Oh, Father, we thank you. We appreciate everything you have done for us and everything you will do, taking care of us in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we have an update uh, for the month of March, April, and May. On the third Saturday, we're going to have the movie and popcorn, 2 p.m., uh, free will donation. Uh, last week we hadn't, or last time we hadn't actually intended for the kids' movie room to be prepared, but it became prepared, so we will be having kids' movie in one room and one out here with the older people. And anyone under the age of 15 is required to have some supervision with them. You can also come join us in person on Sundays at 227 West Main Avenue, West Fargo. We'd be happy to see you. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. In other words, do not feel guilty or guilted into giving. It's what God says. He loves a cheerful giver. It's something you feel. The Lord guides you many different ways in how to be a cheerful giver. A smile to somebody is the biggest thing for somebody some days. And God is able to bless you abundantly so in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. He loves you and he wants you to be happy. So to be happy is just follow what he's asking you to do. Hold the door. Send a card. Have you ever just gotten a card in the mail from somebody that just says, Hi, I was thinking of you. And you were kind of having a lousy day and all of a sudden that card just completely perked you up. Things like that. It's just little things. <coughs> Not looking for you to drain your checking account. That is not the purpose of what he's asking. And for those that would like to send it to us also, it's at 227 West Main, West Fargo, 58078. Thank you. And now today, what are your dreams? You know, a dream is a series of thoughts, images, emotions occurring during sleep, a strong desire or goal or purpose, something you want. Now sometimes you get these want or these ideas that you didn't even know you wanted. And all of a sudden it becomes a really strong desire. I've said it before and I'll probably say it many times, but when the Lord told me to get ordained, poor Frank is all I could ever say. I was getting ready to, for work and all of a sudden he put this in me and I called Frank and I didn't even understand what I was saying. I was saying it so fast, so excited. So, he was my pastor, so it's like, he will know what I'm trying to say. Almost. <laughs> but he put that dream and that, I tell you, that thing just exploded in me instantly. And that was only in 2017. And here we are now in 22. And wow, he's changed that dream to dream after dream after dream. and. You can't wait for the next step. So when you get these dreams and you know they're real and there's something that you really want, take that step of faith. Follow the Lord. He'll take you there. He'll give it to you. And oddly enough, he's going to give you a whole lot more than you think that dream is. And it's so worth it. It can be a little terrifying. But if you trust God, you don't have to worry about it. Because dreams, he gives them to you. And otherwise, ask him, what is my dream? What is the dream you have for me that I don't know about that is the ultimate dream? Not, gee, I hope I get a raise this year. 
to make an extra thousand dollars. That's not the dream. That's the I wish. Is the I wish. They're worthless. It's good intentions to say, but it's not how it is. Now with this dream that the Lord has put on me, it's changed in my perspective as to what I want it to be as well. To feed as many of God's children spiritually as I can. Give whatever the Lord tells me to share with people. Sometimes I really think it hits the ground with a big thud. But later I have been told that that's what they needed to hear. So I don't put doubt so much in what I'm saying because it wasn't my idea to talk about it in the first place. To feed those that are hungry for the homeless, the lost, the lonely, the hurting. These are all things that we are supposed to do as children of God. Use your life for those around you and watch your life and your dreams get bigger and better. It sounds, you know, impossible. There are people in situations where they literally have nothing. But have you ever noticed that some of them are the happiest people? They don't have anything to worry about, nothing to stress about. They have nothing. They don't have a car. Some of them don't have homes. But you know, they're happy. It's something to pay attention to. The less they have. When the kids were little, we were living in this small apartment. And the oldest daughter had said to me one time, you know, Mom, when we lived in that place that didn't have hardly any room, and you never had any money. And I didn't. And your car never had enough gas. We had a lot more fun. She said this to me several years ago. Well, it was real simple then. We just sit down and we play games. We had card games. We had that game Trouble, that click, click, click. I was hoping it would wear out and it never did. But you know, that's how it went. You did what you have. You gave to each other from your heart. And that's how what God wants us to do. It tells us in Matthew 19, 26, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So just trust him, follow him, listen to him, do what he asks. And if you miss it, you get to take it again, as Joyce Meyer says many times. If you fail the test, you get to take it over again, because you really never fail. It's up to you to decide how soon you want to be growing with the Lord. Keep it close in your heart and feed it so you understand it. So in Genesis, God told Jacob in a dream. He got a lot of dreams too. In this one, Joseph had a dream from Genesis 37, 5 through 7. And when he told his brothers, they hated him all the more. They never liked him because they knew there was something special about him. And they felt in, you know, threatened by this special little brother. Well, they were missing something. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. How can you just see this kid? I'm so excited I got to have this dream. We were brightening sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright. Well, your sheaves gathered around me and go to it. Now, what older sibling or what sibling is going to really want to hear that? <laughs> But he was so excited the Lord put this in him. I'm going places. I'm going to do things. I'm going to have power. I don't have a clue what this dream means, but this is what I think. And he really didn't have a clue where he was going with that dream. But his brothers were so not impressed. How often have you been jealous of a sibling? Well, this one, he's got all the money. She doesn't have to do anything but stay home with kids. He doesn't want anything to do with any of us. <laughs> Can't say that's always a bad thing. <laughs> there are some people that you're supposed to keep at a respectable length just because you want to remain loving them and civil. Not all relatives are easy to get along with. <laughs> Not all people are. But that's how it is. These are similar to prophecies we talked about last week. So this one just kind of fell into almost a second sermon on that. Because when, the, when God is giving you a dream, he's telling you something. 
something serious, something important. So if you remember it, and you're afraid you might forget it, write it down so you can remember. And he will help remind you in many ways. Judges 7, 13 through 16. Gideon arrived just as the man was telling his friend a dream. I had a dream, he was saying. And it sounds really odd. But a round loaf of barley bread come tumbling into a Mennonite camp. And it struck the tent with such force that it overturned, the tent overturned and collapsed. Now, doesn't that sound like something you'd see in a cartoon, some animated show? They didn't have those then, so that would have been quite a dream. His friends responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Mennonites and the whole camp into his hands. Here's your silver platter. Go with it. Do it. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down in worship. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Mennonite camp into your hands. This is your gift from the Lord. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and jars, empty jars in the hands of them with torches inside. Now there's a dream coming to light. <laughs> 300, and this is when he had to cut back all those people because there was too many. This is a dream that these people had had for a long time and a lot of them gave up on it. So here, he heard it from a third party. This is what's happening. It's pretty cool. You know, it's like eavesdropping on some of this conversation. Oh, there's a sale. Gotta go. But no, this is even better. The Lord is giving the camp back. Because somebody had a dream that he had to make sure to share at the right time with the right people for the right situation for them to get it back. Stay strong in the Lord. This loaf of bread was the poorest grain they had. So it wasn't so much that it was the quality of that, it's just the fact that this small group of men were going to take over the whole thing because they had faith in the Lord. They listened, they followed, they believed, they did what the Lord told them to do. But they had to follow the protocol. They had to start with hearing God and listening. Job 33, 12 through 18. But I tell you, in this you are not right, for God is greater than any mortal. Amen. Because if we had to trust mortals, we'd not get anywhere. And I apologize for the bad grammar. That's just how strong it is. Why do you complain to him that he responds to no one's word? For God does speak now one way, now another way. Through no one perceive, though no one perceives. People aren't listening. He's telling you. He's telling everybody, but most people don't pay any attention. In a dream, in a vision of night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their heads, now he can get your attention. He may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings, to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from their pride to preserve them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. It's a prophecy in a dream. He's telling you what to do to save yourself, what you have to do to be saved. Listen, you know, there's so many ways that the Lord works in our dreams. There's a big difference between a dream and a dream of the Lord. The dream of the Lord shakes you, wakes you. It's, it's like the meat of your meal. It's there for a reason, and you need to pay attention to it. He shows you things. He's got a better way of life for you if you just do what he asks. Otherwise, in the pit, that's hell. He's telling you, you have my life. Or you have hell. The dream isn't uh, wishy-washy. It's pretty clear when he tells you something. Here, he's telling them, these are your choices. Follow me or live in hell. Nobody wants that. Psalm 126. 
there's six verses in there. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter. That's the sound of happy. Our tongues were songs of joy. That's definitely happy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. That's why they're happy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. When you smile, that's the Lord. You're smiling because it's joy. You don't smile when there's no joy. Restore, restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in Negev. Negev, excuse me. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed to sow, will return the songs of joy, carrying sheaves with, with them. Again, this is a dream that the Lord had with them for a long time. They have been waiting and waiting. Those seasons that we have between one thing and the next, they can really be overwhelming. People kind of start to lose their faith. You know, that's when they went to the idols and all the other foolishness that man has done over the years. It's a test. Follow me, stay strong in me, and then when I come back, you're gonna have the mouth full of laughter and joy, songs, all the beautifully wonderful things. It's being restored to happy. Dreams that they've been waiting for are coming to them. The Lord's timing is perfect. It's never off by any amount of time. He has things so lined up meticulously. If we knew what we were going to get in advance, man, would we be a mess. Well, next week, I know I'm going to win the lottery and I'm going to have $10 million. But this week, I'm going to go out and spend 20. <laughs> You're going to put yourself in such a mess, but the Lord has it set up where he knows when, what, and how, and we need to wait Go through the season strong in faith and trust in the Lord. He is the one who takes care of it. The dream that's waiting for us is worth waiting for every time. And then there's always another one. You get through the first one and say, yes, that was wonderful. What does he have for me now? It's like watching a mystery movie. What's going to happen next? Matthew 1, 18 through 24. This is how the, Jesus, the birth of Jesus and Messiah came about. His mother Mary pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she, found she, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Now, how many people are going to believe that even today? <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't seem possible. And you're right, only through God are these things possible. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. You know, he's quite the gentleman all around. Lost, confused, angry, no doubt, and frustrated. It's like, we had all this planned. You messed it up. You don't make a mess and you're talking to the Holy Spirit. It's no way. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. You know, there is your cue. It's the angel of the Lord that's talking to you in a dream. That's where you're getting your dreams from God. He said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. You know, that's what you call a thought of, huh? <laughs> because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Now he's got an angel giving them a dream, talking about the Holy Spirit. How many of us would be sitting up straight going, wow, <laughs> that'd be awesome. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Now not only is he forgiving everything, he's got something to do with it. You're going to name him, because he will save his people from their sins. Now. First he had this burden of, well, how can I divorce, divorce her quietly and not let her be shamed? And now I'm going to have the kid that's going to save our sins? What a change. There's what you call a turn of events. 
All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. You'd already heard about it, but nobody believed anything like that then. You know, it's come on, this guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Besides, Paul's over there baptizing him, so he can't be doing that. Well, that's not Paul, they find. <laughs> the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. I mean, can you imagine waking up, sitting up, and scratching your head going, what just happened? What was I just told? You know, you just can't really understand it, but you have to follow through with it. It's the dream of all dreams that him and Mary got to be part of. Most things like that, people are like, yeah, I watch too many movies on something. Most times that's what it is, but not when it's from God. There is no misunderstanding. And Joseph was given so many dreams when it came to Jesus. You know, he was told more than Mary was. He was the one in charge of that family. So the Lord was in charge of him and them. In Matthew 2.13, when they had gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up! He said, take this child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Hurry up, get up, let's go. We don't have time to think about it. You know, wake up. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Okay, now, first the Lord tells me i got to stay with Mary because there's something special happening. Then he tells me that we're going to have this kid that's going to take care of everybody and their sins. And now we have to run with this kid and my wife because somebody wants to kill them. Can you see this in a three-part series on TV? <laughs> Not in a dream? But... Joseph was a good man. He listened. He come to understand that these dreams are real and part of his part of life. We would rationalize this as, but then they would have found you if you did that. So then in Matthew 2, 19 through 23, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. He said, get up! He get up again, he likes to wake that man up. Take this child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. <sighs> what a relief, right? So now life can get, well, would you define normal? <laughs> That's a word that only works out of dryer, really, because nothing is normal in anybody's life. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that the Achilles, pardon me, was reigning in Judah in a place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. I can't say I blame him. This is one of those situations where they use the phrase, the apple dogs are far fall from fall far from the tree. It's not worth the risk, but he was told, you know, this better make this detour. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. These prophets were really... I'm looking forward to being a prophet, by the way. I'm waiting patiently for that joy to share. That he would be called a Nazarene. Oh, it is... Fact, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Joseph had all of these dreams, all of these things to do. Why? <laughs> he protected our Savior. He got him to where he needed to be, to be raised in a safe place, to do what he needed later. But at the same time, all this pressure. I have the baby that's going to save everybody's sins and save them. And I don't know how fast they grade in those years, but if I were to be told something like that, I'd be instantly gray all over. <laughs> because there is some serious wow. If somebody told me that child that you're raising 
is going to take care of everyone and not know until later how. That would really be a wild thing, but Joseph, he listened to God, and because of that, we have our Savior. Let God guide you. you know, let him give you those dreams. Open up your heart. Tell the Lord, show me my dreams. I never did before, but now I'm asking all the time, show me my dreams. Show me my dreams. And I come to find through conversation with Christina that we get told often the same thing, almost in the same way, and at the same times. And it's really powerful and overwhelming and confirmation. We know that's the God that's God speaking to us. It's, if you will, a daydream. But these are no coincidences. God does not do coincidences. The chances of something like that happening are impossible without God. And we know we're going to be filling these seats. We know we're going to be having more than one service. We know God is sending children that need to be fed spiritually by what he wants them to hear. We know God has amazing things for all of us. And I'm excited to see all of them. Everybody has dreams and things that are going on. Not everybody talks about them because they don't think it's something that's going to ever happen. Open that door. Claim it. Make your prophecy in your dream. Lord, this is what I'm claiming. You may not get that, but you'll get something better. But first, you have to step out in faith, claim it, prophesy the positives in your life, because that's what a prophecy is. The rest of it is condemnation. There's no such thing as a negative prophecy, not from God. He is nothing but good, love, always endures forever. So, just Asking to see, let you know a little hint of what's in store for you because it really gets amazing. You know, you can't have an, you know, there's no vacation that God can't make the best in store for you. So, if you're not willing to take the steps, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. So let the Lord open you up. Let yourself open up to the Lord, is what I should say, so that he is there for you. Oh, again, always feel free to come join us. We're here every Sunday service at 10 o'clock. Come and enjoy the music, the company. Make some friends. Come learn the Lord's word. We're happy to see you. Father, we thank you for everyone that hears your word. We thank you for taking everyone to a Bible-based church. For those that are learning your word, getting it deep inside, guide them, help them, let them know it's you. Nothing is done without you guiding it, Lord. Nothing positive can come from anything else. In Jesus' name, amen. And if anybody... <clears throat> It's always on the brink of being saved. It's a very simple thing. You can do this at any time or you can say it with me online. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Please come into my heart. You are my Lord and Savior. And then it's like that. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. With those simple words, you are now saved. And you will improve immediately and permanently in Jesus' name. We will help guide you. Yeah, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We have one more song. <clears throat>